Alright guys, we've got a podcast on elements, compounds, and mixtures. Make sure that you are ready to take notes as we go through this. So make sure you're going to pause the video, the pause button's your friend. Take some notes as we're going through this. Uh, first thing is the definition. Elements versus compounds. What do you think the difference is? This is something you should be very, very sure of already. How do you know if something's an element? Well, the easiest way to know something is an element is you look on your periodic table. Right? It's called the periodic table of the elements. If you look at the wall in the classroom, you'll see it's periodic table of the elements. So if it is on the periodic table, it's an element. If it's not, it's not. Okay, It's that simple. Now we do have some formal definitions of an element. For example, it's a substance that cannot be separated into simpler substances by chemical means. Okay, Now we can do that to compounds, but not to elements. A pure substance is an element if it is made up of only one kind of atom. Well, that makes sense. If it's all carbon, then it's an element. And it's the simplest form of matter that has a unique set of chemical properties. Again, that's an element. So if we think of examples, we can think of things, some simple examples like carbon or tin, for example, or iron or gold, or even things like nitrogen and oxygen or hydrogen or helium. These are all elements. Okay. Now, what about compounds? Well, a compound must not be an element, so it's actually two or more elements that are chemically combined in a fixed proportion. So, for example, it might be H2O, but it could not be N2 because N2 is the same element. It's two atoms of nitrogen. Okay. So, for example, it could be sodium chloride, it could be magnesium oxide, calcium chloride, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, plant sugar, which is glucose, or refined sugar, which is sucrose. These are just a small number of many, 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 many compounds. But you'll notice they are all at least two or more, two or more elements, and they are in a fixed proportion. So for example, here you've got one calcium and two chlorines. So it's a fixed proportion. Down here with plant sugar or glucose, you have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens. Fixed proportions. Now, compounds can be broken down into simpler substances by chemical means. So they can be broken down, for example, into carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But elements cannot. So that's the way we look at them from a chemical perspective. Pure substances, we sometimes call them just substances. Elements and compounds are both examples of pure substances. And every sample of a given pure substance has identical intensive properties because every sample has the same composition. In other words, it doesn't matter how much water you have, it's still going to be clear. For example, it doesn't matter how much water you have, it's still going to have the same density. Those are intensive properties. So, in general, the properties of compounds are quite different from those of their component elements. A perfect example would be sodium chloride, which is table salt. So when you combine sodium and chlorine in a one-to-one -one ratio, you get table salt. And we put it on our food, and it helps our food, it enhances the flavor, and it tastes good. Okay, but what about sodium and chlorine separately? Well, sodium is a metal, and in fact, sodium is a metal that we have to keep under oil because it will react with water, it will react with the air. Chlorine, at room temperature, is a gas, right? And it's a gas that if you inhale it, will burn your, the inside of your nose and burn your lungs, in fact, if you breathe enough of it, it'll kill you. All right? Well, that's not true with salt. All right? You can sniff salt all day, and it won't hurt you. So clearly there are different chemical properties when things become compounds. So pure substances, sometimes called just a, su a substance, are either an element or a compound. So what's a mixture? What do you think a mixture is? Pause the video. What do you think? All right. A mixture, very simply, is a blend or two of, a blend of two or more pure substances. So can we think of some examples? Again, pause the video, see if you can come up with a couple. All right, mixtures might be chocolate milk, paint, salt water, um, sugar water. Lots of things around you are mixtures. Dirt is a mixture. A chocolate chip cookie is a mixture. Uh, a blueberry muffin or a poppy seed bagel, they're all mixtures. So how can you distinguish a pure substance from a mixture? Well, if the composition of the material is fixed, then the material is a pure substance. For example, with water, it's always two hydrogens and one oxygen. It's H2O. Or for something like carbon, it's just carbon. 
Now, if the composition of a material may vary, the material is a mixture. So let me give you an example. Would you drink salt water? I expect your answer is no, right? But in reality, the answer is yes. I'm sitting here with a glass of water taken straight out of the tap here in Roanoke County, right? It's salt water. Sure it is. You look at G2, for example, a low-calorie energy drink, right? Would you drink this? Probably. Do you realize that it has a bunch of salt in it? Well, it sure does. If you look over here at the, um, at the ingredients list, right there is salt. So, yes, certainly it does. you do drink salt water. Now, when you think salt water, you're probably thinking of a higher concentration of salt water. So let's go back and we say, if the composition of a material may vary, then the material is a mixture. Well, that's what we're talking about. How much salt is in the water? It can vary. Okay, so G2 or salt water is a mixture. Okay. Now, we do have two types of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. You should be able to look at these words and kind of get a guess as to what they mean based on these prefixes. So I'll give you a moment, see if you can think of it on your own, and then come back. Okay, hetero versus homo. When you think of homo, you think one. When you think of hetero, you think many. All right, so a homogeneous mixture looks like one thing. And a heterogeneous mixture, you can actually see multiple things in it. So can we think of an example? Well, my favorite example here is a chocolate chip cookie. And a homogeneous mixture would be something where you cannot see anything in it that makes it different. For example, tap water. There's also sorts of things in tap water or in bottled water that isn't water. So that is an example of a homogeneous mixture. So heterogeneous mixtures are mixtures with visibly different parts. Granite, chocolate chip cookies, uh, blueberry bagel, those kinds of things. A homogeneous mixture does not contain visibly different parts. So sugar water, seawater, air is another good example. Gold rings, uh, my wedding ring, is not pure gold. If it was, it would be too soft, so they mix it with other metals. So a homogeneous mixtures are often also called solutions. So how can I separate mixtures? Well, if I have a heterogeneous mixture, like this one where you can see the uh, you can see rocks in it, you can see dirt, you can see gravel, right? You can separate it through a screen because they're different sizes. So a heterogeneous mixture, you can use filtration um, to use a screen to trap the solids, or you could use filter paper, for example, to go and trap, trap coffee grounds. Or you could put um, macaroni and cheese through a colander, actually the macaroni through a colander, let the water drain out and keep the macaroni up on top. Those are all examples of separating a heterogeneous mixture. Now, for a homogeneous mixture, that's a little harder. Right? And what we use often is distillation. So in here we have some tap water, which has other stuff in it. And we boil it with a Bunsen burner. And the steam comes up here and has nowhere to go. So it goes down this tube. When it goes down, it goes into this inner tube, which is very hard for me to draw. Right there, there's an inner tube in there where the steam is going down. And we have an outer tube where we put cold water in here, which keeps the inner tube cold, and the cold water comes out. The warmer water comes out. But what's happened is all of the steam that was in this tube, it starts to condense. It hits the inside walls of this tube, and it starts to condense. And as a result, it comes and it drops out of here into this flask. So this flask is something called distilled water. It is absolutely pure. The only thing in it is water. There is nothing else in it. I can take dirty water out of a stream. I could take water with food coloring in it. I could take Coca-Cola and boil it. And what I would get over here on the right is pure water. So what's happening is the liquid is turning into a gas, and then it's recondensing back into a liquid. And this thing is called a distillation apparatus, and you need to know what that means. So pause the video, write that down. All right, we use it for um, petroleum refining as well. This is where we get gasoline. All right, another thing that we can do is for a homogeneous mixture, we can make it hot and then we can crystallize it. And the liquid part is allowed to evaporate, leaving the solid crystals behind. So you see something here, and you should all know what that is. That is rock candy. That's exactly how rock candy is made. That's exactly how gemstones are created. 
Now, we also have something else called chromatography. This is something you would have done in biology class uh, sometime way back when, where you have a solution, and you might put a dot of ink down here, a dot of chlorophyll down here or something, and you put a liquid down in the bottom, and it could be water, it could be alcohol, it could be acetone, it could be some other solvent that starts running up the filter paper or the piece of paper that's in here, and it carries the colors up, and you'll notice how the colors are separating. Like over in this one, you specifically see a red all the way down to the bottom and a yellow and a blue. So these are actually separating into their component colors. Right? So we can do that often with ink and chlorophyll as examples. All right. So kind of as a summary, let's see what we have here. We have an item, and it can either be a substance, i.e. a pure substance, which is over here, or we can have a mixture. And if we have a pure substance, a pure substance is going to be one of two things. It's going to be an element, like, for example, carbon, or it's going to be a compound, something like CO2. It could be a heterogeneous mixture where you have things mixed together, where you can actually see something different. A good example of that is granite. Um, or you could have something that's a homogeneous mixture, which is, for example, tap water, where you cannot see anything, homo meaning one, you cannot see anything in it. Hetero meaning multiple, where you can see different things in it. And remember that you can separate a compound chemically into different pieces of elements, and you can take a mixture, and you can actually physically separate that, for example, a colander, as we saw with the macaroni and cheese. So, for these items below, identify them as a substance or a mixture, an element, a compound, a heterogeneous or homogeneous mixture. Pause the video. Go ahead and see if you can do it. Okay, your first one here is sodium bicarbonate. That's NaHCO3. I realize you don't know the formula yet, but that's okay. Sodium bicarbonate is a compound. Let me jump right down to the bottom. Uranium, uranium you should have found on a periodic table. Uranium is element U. It's number 92. It is an element, which leaves the three in the middle. Stainless steel looks like one thing. So it's a homogeneous mixture. Because it looks like one thing. Nail polish, it's probably a homogeneous mixture. Now, some of them are not, because you'll have glitter in them and stuff, and those are heterogeneous mixtures. And a blueberry bagel is definitely a heterogeneous mixture, because you can see the, uh, the blueberries as well as the bagel. All right, so in summary, you should be able to identify an element of compound mixtures and separate them into hetero and homogeneous, and you should be able to identify matter break it up into pure and mixtures. And you should be able to, how to identify, I'm sorry, identify how to separate mixtures. So you should know about distillation. You should know about using a filter, filter paper. You should know about chromatography, right? Hopefully you took notes. And um, now you have to go practice, go do your worksheet. And I'll see you in class. If you have any questions, please ask me. See ya. Bye.